Hand keyed animation takes time, a lot of time, and the more keys you add, the more frustrating it can be to work on your animation. So what if there was a way to solve that? To have keyframe animation, but without the keyframes? You're joking. So in this video, I'm going to show you three different ways you can animate in Blender without having to set or manipulate any keys. No way. So open up Blender and let's get started. So the first way you can animate without using any keyframes is by using expressions. No, no, not those, these ones. You can use these expressions in any float value in Blender, whether that be transforms, textures, attributes, anything that you'd normally keyframe, you can use these expressions. The most basic expression is frame or hashtag frame. This essentially adjusts the value by one. So in this example, it translates the cube by one unit per frame on the Z axis. You can adjust this a bit by dividing by two or multiplying by 0.5. Both will give the same result, which is slowing the animation down. This expression gives you a linear attribute, meaning that it will travel at a constant speed. To add to this, we can use a sine function. This will produce a sine wave and will default to a wave height of between one and minus one. The expression for this is sin brackets frame. To adjust the speed, we can add it here in between the brackets. And to adjust the wavelength, we can add multiplication or division to the end of the equation. We can also offset this by using addition or subtraction as well. Along with sine, we also have cosine, which might look really similar, but there's actually a difference. While the sine wave starts at zero, the cosine wave starts at the top of the wave, making it slightly offset, which makes it perfect to use for overlapping action. Take our cube, for example. If we add a cosine wave into the rotation, we get a perfect overlap of the cube moving up and down without having to use any more equations. The next one is tan, which can be thought of ease in and ease out. If we apply this to the translation of the cube, we get, oh, no. What we actually get is this. The default result can be pretty extreme, so you might want to adjust the speed or the scale of this effect. The last useful expression I've found is the random noise expression. And as you'd imagine, this will give you a bunch of random noise throughout your animation. The expression for this is a bit different to the rest. It's noise.random brackets. No need for frame. Thanks Blender for keeping this super simple. Not. So adjusting this value is also slightly different to the rest as well. The default value range is actually zero and one and not minus one to one like the rest of them. So to change this, we have to do two times noise.random brackets minus one. The last number is always half of the first in this equation to get an even value range. So for a value range of between five and minus five, it will be 10 and minus five. Knowing all these different types of expressions, you can easily make something like this, which uses a few simple expressions in the translation and rotational axes. Moving on to the second way you can animate without using any keyframes is by using the F-curve modifiers. You can find them in the graph editor in the end panel named modifiers, but you do have to set a keyframe first. From here, you can see all the modifiers that are available to you. But for this, we're going to focus on the noise and built-in function modifiers. Here, you can see all the different options. Sine, cosine, and tangent are all pretty much the same as we've seen before. However, you have a lot more control over how these functions actually work. And you can restrict the frame ranges, something that you can't do with the regular expressions. The square root and natural logarithms are also pretty similar to each other. And essentially offer an ease out to linear. I can't really see where this would be useful to be honest, but I'm sure someone will find a use for it. The normalized sign is actually really interesting. It's a sine wave that eases out, the sort of thing you could add to a spring or one of these things. Something that returns back to its original location after being moved. The main difference between the expressions and the F-curve modifiers is that it's much more artist friendly. You can see your changes in real time and what they actually represent as animation curves. With that in mind, I used these concepts to recreate this flying animation. You can see that the majority of the movement is made up using sine and cosine waves for the offset, all of which can be fully adjusted, technically making this animation procedural. Up until now, we've looked at ways on how we can animate an object's transforms, but now let's take a look at how we can deform a mesh without using any keys. Not like before. I'm excited, you're excited! Using this setup that I've explained in a previous video, we can create a sine wave using geometry nodes to make the fish move. 
The scene time node works in a similar way as the hashtag frame expression does. Anyway, to make this look a little bit more dynamic, we can create a curve and under the object constraints tab, make a follow path constraint. Select the curve as the target and make sure the fixed position and follow curve boxes are checked. And depending on the orientation of your model, you might want to change the up and forward axes. And for the offset factor, simply use the hashtag frame expression, but make sure to multiply this by a really low number, something like 0.001. Now for the water, just add a plane and create a geometry nodes modifier. Here you want to add some subdivisions and a set position node. We also want to create a noise texture and set the dimension to 4D. That gives us this W value and we can use this to animate the noise. Plug the colour into a vector math node and in the other slot you want to plug in the normal. You can plug this directly into the offset but you might want to add a math node in between the noise texture and the multiply vector node just to adjust the displacement height. To have this animate use a hashtag frame expression in the W slot for the noise texture. In this example I use the expression frame multiplied by 0.1. Add a subsurf modifier and you're good to go. Combining all these different techniques into one piece will really make for a dynamic animation, especially if you want to use these to animate characters. But what if you don't know how to rig? Maybe there's a video about that.